Good afternoon. Uh, we will call to order a special board meeting for the Board of Election Commissioners for the City of Chicago. Uh, today is August 22nd, 2016. Uh, my name is Maricel Hernandez. I'm the chairwoman of the Chicago Board of Elections. Seated to my right is Commissioner William J. Cressy, and to my left is Commissioner Jonathan T. Swain. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the consideration of the agenda. Are there any changes or edits? If not, we'll move on to the approval of the special board meeting minutes of July 27, 2016. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Minutes are approved. Next item on the agenda is the executive director's report. Mr. Guff. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Just to let the board members know a couple of things that we have lined up. First of all, tomorrow we're having a meeting with Equip for Equality and the Justice Department to go over some uh, review of our polling place accessibility. So that will be done over at their offices tomorrow at 2.30. Okay. Second item is I, we are setting up a meeting with the uh, Chicago Board of Education with their uh, security department. As you know, Clinton Hurd is in charge of our investigation department. We're going to set up a meeting with the Board of Ed, and I think it's, it's something that we need, considering more than uh, two-thirds of our polling places are used schools. And the schools are having a lot of problems the uh, last couple of uh, months. So we're going to sit down and meet with the Board of Ed and their security and come up with a plan where we're going to use off-duty police officers and tech teams to help us out. So okay. that's going to be worked on. And uh, basically, uh, registration department, uh, Charles Holiday, they're uh, keeping up with the registrations. There was a backlog, but that's all being taken care of. Mailing, uh, verification, registration are going out. So things seem to be going pretty well right now. Great. Thank you. Are there any questions? If none, um, Kelly? Good afternoon. Um, as Mr. Goff said, the department is just working towards the next election. Uh, voter registration, working as always. Election judge and election coordinator departments are aggressively receiving and recruiting and getting applications, uh, both the online application uh, for judges and ECs, as well as still taking some paper applications um, at the front counter. It is nice because we do have a computer set up at the front counter. So someone can come in and utilize the online system as opposed to filling out a paper, but some people will prefer the paper. Um, investigators, we do have a new online application that we're using to, for um, investigators to sign up, either returning or new or the field supervisors, and that so far is working well. The e-poll book, we conducted a mock election two weeks ago. Uh, we were out at the warehouse. We did Monday, we did a training for the staff so that they would be ready because we wanted Monday or Tuesday to be treated as election day mm -hmm. and everyone come in and just do what they had to do. Um, we had 50 precincts, so we had 100 poll books. We had about 20 staff members. Each staff member in each precinct had about 25 data entries to make. So that, that worked out well. We've had, we have some issues um, with the Verizon MiFi's. There's a power cycling issue, and it's potentially a network error or a network issue. So we've had a couple meetings with Verizon, um, the last one today. We're going to go out to the warehouse again on Wednesday and show them, recreate the issue where it is power cycling. Um, I'm sorry, power cycling. It's, it's powering it's down going off. Time? It's going off. Yeah, it's, it's powering down and coming right back on. It's not like it's not just shutting down. It's going off and coming right back on. So it's, it's not missing a beat. It's not like turning off. You never see a blank screen. It's just... And this is all of them? This, it's interesting. So at the warehouse, we have what we call the 4G room, which is where the e-poll books are maintained and pre and, and, and prepared. There, that room pulls just from an outside tower. So it typically pulls 4G. The other room that we use, we have a 3G repeater in that room uh, because that's where we prepare the hats. So in the th this is where it was happening in the 3G room. Um, pretty much all of the all of the MiFi's in the in the three G room. This was happening on the Monday and then the Tuesday as well. In the four G room, it happened a little bit, but not nearly um, what was happening in the three G room. What's happening across all the devices? Oh, 
On all 25 in the 3G room, yes. Okay. And this didn't happen? In the other room, sporadic. sporadic. Okay. But, but by no means, because I myself, I was in the 3G room and it was happening to me. And so I packed up oh. all my gear and went into the 4G room and I did not, did I didn't not, have a connectivity we problem had at any all. of these issues when we were testing them, testing these at the previous election? We, we did not have a problem with this at all. In the 4G room or the 3G Neither. room? Neither. Okay. So Verizon thinks it's probably a network issue and that's why we're going out Wednesday. They're going to have their engineers there at the warehouse. We can show them. We're going to recreate it and show them, and hopefully they can figure it out, like why it's happening, and give us a good this hope happens resolution. Again. <laughs> hmm? Let's hope it happens again while we're there. Oh, I know it will. I, this isn't something where I'm fearing that it won't happen because they're standing in front of us. I, yeah. I do believe it will happen. It always again. happens that way, doesn't it? So? Yeah. Yes, You're it right, does. yes. And this is the same equipment that we used in March? Correct. Absolutely. And we did not. We had no calls on election day regarding an issue with the MiFi's, with the jet packs. So otherwise, the other part of the test went well. Again, we did data entry. Um, staff is working um, to review and scrutinize the data pretty well um, from, from ESNS. So our IT department is working real well with ESNS. Um, you know, we just want to make sure that all the data that was entered is coming through. And we'll end up, you know, the Wednesday after the election, provisional voting. Uh, new registrations, you know, same-day registrations. We want all that data to be pristine. Right. So we're working very hard. Uh, again, IT is working really, really well with the SNS, working hard with the SNS to get this accomplished, as well as Charles from registration. Oh. Can we go back to the MoFi thing? Yeah. Right yes. what, what's the net effect of what's happening? So, so thing what's powers down. So, so what? what it loses up. connectivity. Okay. So what was happening with the smart updates that we were running in the when we were running the smart updates when we first started, mm -hmm. they if you lose connectivity during the smart update it fails. Mm -hmm. So if that were to happen on election day, they the judges would have to just continue to try to run the smart update and hope that they don't lose connectivity. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we're still we're still analyzing the data to to you know confirm that because when it when it power and judge correct me if I'm wrong when it powers when we lose connectivity any data that is entered during that loss that as soon as the connectivity comes back um, that information should go okay. should be sent Got it. Um, but yeah we, we're hoping that we're hoping it's if it's a network issue Verizon said they can push an update to all our MiFi's mm -hmm. um, we again will we'll do extensive testing okay. just to make sure um, so all right they did indicate, though, when we were talking to them on that Monday and Tuesday, that they were getting reports from other customers that that they believe this was a network issue and that their engineers were investigating the problem. Okay. But it takes a long time to investigate a problem. Is yeah. what I'm glad we're calling that. So, okay. um, warehouse is busy working preventative. They're doing preventative maintenance on the ballot scanners, touch screens, and hats, card activators. So they're just keep, they keep going, working on that. That's all I have. Thank you, Kelly. Um, Jim? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, the application, the online application for voters to request their vote by mail ballots went live on time since the last board meeting. Um, we've had several different outreach activities, um, both in uh, standard English language community as well as uh, Spanish interesting ones. Uh, I, I had the pleasure of uh, working at uh, this Design for America conference of university students who had gathered from, uh, from Stanford to Virginia Tech and everywhere in between at Northwestern University. And they gathered there over the weekend to try to tackle different issues and come up with uh, different concepts, in this case to promote uh, voter engagement. Actually, there it was a, it was a fun forum. We went back there, uh, so we, we had a panel discussion on Friday, and then they worked on this and they researched the things that we said as panelists and everything to try to find out uh, what they could, and then they developed in teams uh, different workable ideas as far as um, outreach went. So um, there were several ideas that we planned to steal from that came out of that. Uh, parking garage where they had the, the little expo of mm -hmm. ideas. Um, also attended the 
Bud Billiken Parade. Uh, it'll be signed up a number of voters, including a gentleman who is 77 years old and registering for the first time, uh, which is interesting. He just he said for whatever reason he wanted to participate in this fall selection. Um, Lance referenced the meetings on accessibility for the polling places. Uh, we're working on the mail piece design now for the voter outreach for uh, middle of October. That would include the early voting and election day polling place information, but also we're planning not on having an application, a mail-in application. We're going to direct people to the website, but we're going to do so more prominently. The design we're working on will contrast a line outside a polling place with a woman sitting <coughs> at a computer in the comfort of her kitchen with a coffee cup and a ballot and voting at home. And so we're going to be trying to promote uh, more vote by mail activity to reduce the traffic on election day, especially if we're going to have uh, a far larger number of election day registrations. Uh, we're on the second mailing for the 2016 canvas. Uh, the design for that has been completed and uh, that should be hitting the mail in the middle of next week to approximately 100,000 newly inactive voters as a result of their mail in, uh, in advance of the March primary coming back undeliverable. Uh, we've reviewed website security uh, for election night returns. Uh, there have been a number of reports about security related to, uh, to uh, uh, elections in, in recent weeks. Uh, we want to make sure that that was battened down. We still have additional work to do with Dominion, and uh, we've been in contact with them. Um, lastly, we've got the candidate file on the web since we last met. Now we're working for the sample ballots, so we don't quite have the sample ballots. As you know from just the, the meeting here, there's still a couple of decisions that need to be made. There's still a couple of court cases, but we're gearing up to have all of that ready so that by early to mid-September, people will be able to pull up their sample ballots. Any questions? Okay, none. Uh, we will go on to the next item under old business, infrastructure projects and changes in election administration. I think we uh, discussed the, that. Um, and the next item is electronic poll books. And again, we discussed, uh, discussed that issue. Uh, voting equipment, um, do we have anything? Uh, with respect nope. to other voting equipment, okay. And lastly, legislation, Mr. Scanlon. Well, Madam Chairwoman and Commissioners, as you <laughs> might have seen from the news media, uh, recently uh, the governor vetoed a um, bill creating automatic voter registration. And um, so that is not going to uh, become law in the uh, immediate near future. Uh, it is possible uh, that the bill may be revisited when the General Assembly reconvenes uh, in late November. Um, there's talk about a possible veto, uh, but we'll have to see. But for right now, uh, there is no bill uh, creating automatic voter registration. Okay. And in any case, it wouldn't have affected the 2016 election. So we're proceeding on correct on our regular course. Correct. You know, just a, you said that it might be a, in the, when the legislature meets again, there might be a veto. You mean a veto override? Uh, yes. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. um, under new business, we have a revised 2016 election calendar amending the deadline for registering to vote through online voter registration. Mr. Scanlon? Uh, Madam Chairwoman and Commissioners, this is a uh, change to the election calendar to reflect a uh, change in the law that came about because of um, Public Act 99-522, excuse me. Uh, that was Senate Bill 1529. And among the things that uh, that bill did was to amend the deadline for online voter registration uh, from 11.59 p.m. on the um, final day for voter registration, which for this election is October 11, 
and the bill would change it to 11:59 on the 16th day before the election, which is Sunday, October 23. Now, uh, there is a provision in the election code that where the last day for um, performing any act under the code that falls on a Saturday, Sunday, or holiday would be moved to the next business day. Uh, after consulting with the uh, State Board of Elections and its general counsel, they seem to feel that the um, deadline should be Sunday, October 23rd. Um, and uh, the reason for that is twofold. One, they believe that um, drafters of the bill intended to uh, cut off online voter registration the day before the start of early voting. And secondly, uh, they believe that um, uh, unlike many other things that need to be done in the election code where you need to have the office of the election authority open for business, um, that is not the case with respect to online voter registration. State Board of Elections office can be shut down, but its uh, online voter registration site can remain, remain open. And I'm told it will remain open until 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, October 23rd. Uh, so the state board considers that to be the deadline, uh, and I would um, uh, would concur with that uh, uh, with that opinion. So I, I've um, presented, or I am presenting to you, a revised uh, election calendar with, that would uh, record the change uh, in the deadline for online voter registration, uh, as as discussed. Is there a but uh, is it necessary to approve it? Yes, please. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the revised 2016 election calendar as stated? Uh, I have one question. Uh, the, on the cover and throughout the uh, date is for the revision, revised. Yes, it will be recorded as I'll change that. I apologize. I anticipated uh, we'd be tr dealing with this on Wednesday, August 24th, and uh, we will change that. Uh, to reflect today's date of August 22nd. And not August 224. Uh, <laughs> no, that's just something that there is a strike through on that. You just can't I see it. I understand. Yeah. Okay, so it'll be uh, recorded as August 22 as the revision date. As such, I will so move that it be adopted. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you. By selection calendar is amended and adopted. Uh, next on the agenda is the legal report. Mr. Scanlon. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, um, uh, there are a couple of matters I'd like to discuss with the board in executive session regarding uh, pending uh, and uh, imminent litigation. And um, at that time, I'd, I'd ask for a, an appropriate motion. Um, there is no financial report. And I have received uh, no requests for public comment. And there, there is no one here, I believe, who is requesting public comment. Ms. Jett, is there? No. Okay, just checking. Um, so at this time, uh, I would like to entertain a motion for executive session. Um, and there will be no action taken in executive session. If there if needs to be any action taken, it will take place once we uh, resume and go back into open session after we're done with the executive session. Is there a motion to enter into executive oh. session? And, and I would just ask that the motion uh, be um, to discuss uh, pending and imminent litigation pursuant to Section 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act and also to uh, approve uh, minutes of um, some past executive session um, uh, pursuant to Section 2C21 of the Open Meetings Act. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, we will now enter into executive session. Um, we are back from executive session. Um, in executive session, the, there was uh, no action was taken, uh, and there is no action to be taken in open session as a result of our discussion in executive session. So at this time, um, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn until um, 
our next uh, regularly scheduled board meeting of August 23rd. No, no. September 13th would be the next day. That's, well, it is the next schedule. Yes. <laughs> wow. September 13th, 2016 at 9 a.m. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you.